Hello and welcome to my third Tomb Raider Remastered Let's Play. Um, I'm doing this one straight after the first two. So, as with last time, I will get to any comments. Uh, optimistically thinking that someone might have commented. But um, I'll get to them. I'm probably going to do Tomb of Qualipec at a later date, so I'll do it then. So, left off with Lost Valley. I still can't get over how amazing that looks. And also, Laura actually has her braid. Because for whatever reason, it was chopped off in the original game, even though you can see it in the FMV sequences. So here we are in the Lost Valley. And we have more wolves. that we're going to have to shoot. It sort of feels like a... Is it a shooting fish in a barrel? Is that the phrase? Um, either way, it's... it's sort of... A bit unfair on the wolves that you're that far away. They don't have a chance to. Uh, don't even have a chance to attack. I suppose I could come down here and let them bite me, but uh, I've got much scarier enemies on their way. So, oh, actually, including this. Now, this I really like because, as far as I can remember, this is the only time. I might be wrong, there might be one that I'm forgetting, but I think it's about the only time in the core games where there's a section that is completely and utterly devoid of anything useful. There's just, just this little bit down here, which is a, a little nest of wolves. So you end up taking a bit of damage and you get absolutely nothing from it whatsoever. There's no medipack or ammo or anything. Oh, there is now in this version a lovely view of a cloudy sky. It's getting brighter out there. You can see the sun through the clouds. Exciting. But yeah, I just really like the fact that you have to go through all that and then you get absolutely nothing out of it. I suppose unless you go for all kills, but what kind of psychopath would go for all kills? Uh, first time I played this level, I actually got the level cheats. So I did a level skip, and went through, and I think I sort of saved one of each level on each slot in the saving, just so I could kind of explore each level. And so many of them, I just couldn't get anywhere. Um, I really did not have the brain for computer games at this or this type of game anyway at this point. Like, I had no idea what to do. I didn't realise you could climb up here. Somehow this, you know, one small wall to climb up flummoxed me. Ah, another nice open bit there. What was that before? Well, there was just nothing at all there. And some lovely rays of sunshine. So, yeah, I knew that... This is another section that I'd see my mate play, and I knew that this was here, in one of the levels, but I just had no idea how to actually get to it, because, yeah, obviously, you know, just jumping and grabbing on a, a ledge on a wall was way too much for me. And here we go, into the first really iconic... Well, that raptor's come at me a bit quicker than normal. I, yeah, I knew this was here, because I'd seen my mate play it, so I never had the the surprise that I'm sure a lot of people had, kind of, having just been through some caves and stuff, and suddenly coming out into this valley and there being dinosaurs. 
and that is such a brilliant bit of game design like just to throw that out completely out of the blue and you know this is one probably the bit of the game that is most well remembered obviously now we actually have the outdoors i suppose i think this is meant to be outdoors i don't think that's meant to be uh, a ceiling i think it's just night time except everything's lit up because tomb raider but now we have this glorious sky um i think it works i think it works because i'd already kind of accepted that this was meant to be outdoors even though it never properly looked like it And now, of course, for the key moment, the most memorable moment of the game. T oh, wow, we get a, a health bar for T-Rex. That's new. And this is one enemy is extremely hard to outrun. And here we go, Medipack. I suppose I could have just run into the alcove in the wall and shot it from there, which is actually what we normally do. But, uh, there we go. I've just decided to tackle it head on. And I just won an award for that. I got the trophy T-Rex Stinked. Because, obviously, this being Lara Croft, she finds dinosaurs and they're alive. 65 million years after, well, probably more. I don't know when T Rexes and Raptors are around, but wow. Laura's first instinct is well, I've got to shoot them. But, um, yeah, normally I would run in here. T Rex can't get you because he's big. He thinks he's all hard because he's big, but it means I can run away. However, the raptors are, for some reason, in this cave. And yeah, normally, being a massive coward, I would shoot the T-Rex from here. So this is another type of level design, I suppose. Oh wow, there's more kind of things up there. And again, nothing originally. Ah, oh, that's lovely. Um, yeah, this is another type of level. So we've had the direct kind of linear level with caves, and then there's been a hub level on the city of Ilgabamba. This time you've got kind of an area where it's not quite a hub. You've not kind of got to go to one bit to open another, to do another, it's not that sort of level. But instead... Uh -huh. Secret. Um, instead you've just got lots of sort of little places to go sort of separately in one area. And to be absolutely honest, I always get confused in the Lost Valley because there's so so many of these little caves and some of them have got secrets and some of them have got cogs and so on and yeah some of them can be accessed via pools and some of them are just alcoves um, and this one's got a raptor in hello friend you're, you're sort of neon orange not entirely sure about that um, so yeah, this is the first level that can be a little bit overwhelming and confusing in its design. Not doing a great job of shooting this, but I suppose... Oh, actually, he's got little spines on the back of his head, which... Did he use... Oh, oh there was a hint of them before. But yeah, it's close quarters combat in these games is a nightmare because the whole kind of the way of doing combat in these games is flipping around, jumping around, and 
you really can't do that when you're backed into a corner. But thankfully that pool of water is at least there. Now what am I going up here for? Is this the first cog? Aha! I'm saying that because Laura doesn't start saying that until the second game. So no aha, but we do get some monk music. Some extremely brief monk music. So that's the first of, I think, three cogs. further down this passage I haven't explored it like I said they, they're all really similar so it's very easy to kind of get confused and work out which ones have been down and what I've missed speaking of missed this is really nicely atmospheric down here I'm going to stop flipping to the original graphics at some point but the kind of the difference in the atmosphere of just having things like that missed is brilliant what's up here Another gap into the real world. <coughs> ah, yeah, it's the other way in. You totally missed that one last time. Right, so I'll carry on down the valley. I think if there's going to be a level where I miss a secret, it's going to be this one because I think there's five. Is there anything in here? No. I think this is just a dead end. Or is it? I hear a raptor. Where are you, mate? No, he's disappeared. Ah, there you Oh, two more. God, there's more of these than I thought. Well, I'm pressing jump instead of action, so I'm not shooting them. I'm just leaping around like a wally. Like I say, you wouldn't believe that I've been playing this game for 20 years. Wow. The puddle's got reflection of the sky, and that's really cool. Oh, there's no puddle there. Oh no, there is a puddle, it's just blue. Reflecting the black. I'm really impressed by just how much sort of attention to detail there's been in this remaster. This could easily have been quite lazy and I think some people were worried that it was looking a bit lazy, especially given that there was no like... There was so little marketing done for this remaster. Yeah, you know, outside the the game's main fan base, there didn't seem to be that much talk about these coming out. But now, thankfully, there's some really, really great kind of creative decisions here. Okay, cog number two. This is a little temple with a very weird face. What did that used to look like? Oh, that used to be the same. Um, yeah, so this is kind of... I mean, are, are we meant to believe that maybe the, the citizens of Vilcabamba used to come here as well with the T-Rex living in the valley? Well, clearly someone did. Right now, got to climb up this way to get onto the roof of the temple to get the next secret. Is it this one? That's the one. That's sneaky. That really doesn't look like you can jump up. Needless to say, this is not a secret I ever got when I first played this. This is uh, this is kind of one of the, the great things about these games is how much they reward exploration. Like, I love this. So I did this in two minutes, and I'm dead. I really should have saved. Oh dear, when did I last save? Was it the T-Rex? 
oh no it was probably going into the violet right uh see you in a bit now the thing is i would normally save a lot um yeah i'm one of those safe scummy people who is always saving just because i just hate going over the same thing over and over and over again i know that kind of that's effectively the punishment for doing it wrong hey you see <laughs> i'm not doing that again oh the quick load button doesn't work or well, maybe it's moved um so <clears throat> Yeah, uh, normally I wouldn't be just saving throughout so I can make mistakes, but I thought, no, I'm going to go on to, if I'm doing this on YouTube, I'm going to show off and not be one of these people. I want to have confidence that I don't have to save all the time. And as a result, I should have saved earlier and ended up having to redo half a level. So, more for me. Anyway, here's the next secret. And more Uzi clips gonna have quite a lot of these by the time we get them and of course by the time you get them you lose them straight after so there's something slightly uh don't know what's the word futile about it maybe yeah i'm not gonna jump down there Get off here, is it over here? There we go. So now carrying on into the first cave on this side of the valley. I think I might have got rid of all the dinosaurs now. Which is fine, I think, you know, they they sort of didn't overdo it. They realised that obviously they're going to be uh, really kind of memorable. So you don't want to just kind of over-egg it and put dozens and dozens of them in because you get bored of them. I think variety is definitely something that these core games have really have going for them. Is probably one of the things people dislike the most about the um, last revelation is it gets really samey after a while and it's something I struggle with a little bit with those early Crystal Dynamics games but um, like Underworld in particular is uh, texturally and in terms of enemies and stuff is just really samey Whereas here, you know, you get a dinosaurs, so they're coming for this level, there's a, a little bit of them in the next one, and that's it, they're gone. I think it helps make those encounters really memorable. And it's kind of memorable moments like that that have kind of made this game in particular, you know, kind of a classic. Now, this is a very, very, very sneaky secret because you have to shimmy along a bit that you can't see and then walk on running water now you've not done anything like that at all in the game so far so yeah that's one for experienced players only but i suppose it kind of the game rewards replaying as well with things like that you know this isn't just a game where you play it once and you've you've done everything the secrets in particular are really um, really invite you to come back and explore these levels properly which I suppose you've also got now a little bit with the trophies I think like the later games do that they give you a kind of you have difficulty levels and trophies and things like that which they feel maybe a little bit artificial to me, I like the idea that you know this is an adventure that you go on. You can't kind of choose how many enemies you get or how hard they are to kill, and 
you don't get like, the computer awarding you trophies and stuff. Maybe I'm just incredibly old fashioned when it comes to games because I have mostly played this kind of thing. But I like, I suppose I like just the the variety and the rewards coming from the actual gameplay of like each level having its own its own individual quirk and its own challenges. What did this guy used to look like back in 96? Uh, not even allowed to see it. Come on, camera. Well, he looked like Manny from Grim Fandango. So he looks like a skeleton properly this time. And that's the Lost Valley itself left behind. <coughs> there's quite a bit of backtracking here, which again, I think this is kind of something new. This this level, the structure of this level is really different to the previous two. There's no backtracking in those at all, unless I suppose you count the main hub section of Vilcabamba. But here we go right back up to the start. And some tricky jumps over the river. These used to, I used to have to save it every time I'd done it because I could not get these jumps right before I'd mastered the grid controls. Even now they can be nasty. The one thing they haven't remastered are the sounds. And that incredibly short loop of running water is really, really naff and really annoying. I don't know why I've got my guns out there. There's nothing around here, is there? Is there a bat? No. Okay. I'm going to get a secret. This is another one on running water. Although well, at least it's a little bit better signposted this time. Probably should have got this one later, shouldn't I? Because now this is the first bit of current in the water where you really just can't get out. So I'm back down to the bottom of the waterfall. Whee! The ludicrous thing about this level is all you're actually trying to do is get behind that waterfall there. It's another one of those where you look at it and think in anything resembling reality you would not need to go through this. Being attacked by a T-Rex and running around this whole area, there'd be a much, much easier way of doing it. But where would the fun in that be? Or where would the fun be in that? Which one of those is right? I don't know. My brain's going dead. <clears throat> oh, oh, for God's sake. <clears throat> and that is why those jumps are nasty. So I will skip to the top. So here we are, back at the top. And there's a nice array of cogs here. So I suppose this is the first kind of puzzle where we're putting a machine together. It's slightly different to the key of the previous level. And 
yeah, I, I like the idea of this, you know, you kind of... Again, it just adds a bit of variety. It means the sort of puzzles you're doing, there's always something a little bit different. So here we're turning on an ancient machine. Oh, and I see that they haven't updated the graphics so much that the cogs you've added actually turn. Because obviously that would be way too much. <laughs> they just look ridiculous, that animation. like the, the cogs that are already there turn happily. But the ones that you just added that were randomly scattered around a dinosaur valley, they don't turn at all, but you still need them to work the machine. And now that door has moved, meaning the waterfall has stopped and we can get behind it into the tomb of Qualapec which was where we were meant to be going in the first place. But before that, it's a long, spooky tunnel to swim down. I think I somehow ended up going this way by accident once, before the water was in it. Maybe the first time I played it and I just couldn't work out what I was meant to be doing. So I ended up here, and all you end up, all you get is this hole in the ceiling that you can't reach without the water, and I was so baffled. But no, no, it's a secret. I think it's the fifth and final secret. I've probably forgotten one. There's so many, and it's a very generous one. Now, shotgun shells from that shotgun we picked up that that skeleton very handily left for us. For once they actually decided to try and put some sort of logic into the, the placing of items. And a medipack as well. I'm going to save that because that looks like the kind of drop that's going to kill me. Oh no, I knew my health wasn't high so... And swan dive into the water. The, uh, in the original game there'd be kind of like little kind of demos of how the game goes uh, usually I think it was I don't know if it was City of Vilcabamba and Lost Valley or Caves and Lost Valley but it kind of showed you the first sort of minutes gameplay just to give you an idea of what you do and in that they do the swan dive and the swan dive isn't, was never listed in the um, <coughs> Idiot. was never listed in the the controls in the booklet so I never had the faintest idea how to do it I really thought it was just something that was on that demonstration bit and nothing else and the magically opening door you see if we just jumped through that waterfall we could have left all that horrible dinosaur business behind wouldn't have had to kill any dinosaurs at all uh, missed three pickups, which were probably lying around in some alcove somewhere. That's fine. Uh, five out of five secrets. I was really sure that I was going to miss one in that, but no. And no medipacks used because on my second run through the valley itself, I cowardly hid from the T-Rex and shot it from an alcove. Because uh, I'm that kind of person. And that means we're on to the tomb of Qualapec. Which I will do next time I play. And there's my first three levels done. Really, really enjoyed, just really enjoyed playing Tomb Raider again. And like I said at the end of the last level, the Peru area is just my favourite. I love the atmosphere in this. And that one in particular, especially with the, the new kind of sky and design of the Lost Valley itself, that's just really, really beautiful. So I really enjoyed playing that. So yeah, again, if you have any comments, thoughts, criticism, abuse, anything you want to send me, feel free to comment below. No, please don't send any abuse. Um, but yes, comments are below, and there's like and subscribe, share, all these things which might help my video be seen by other people. 
and any comments I'll be replying with the next level, which is Tumor Qualifac, which will be coming soon. And thank you very much for watching.